Okay, five minutes and oh. Let's see what we've got today. Uh, I'm going to come here. There's been talk of not taking and all that type of stuff. And um, got to stick with what you like to play. Do you know, I mean, there's so many variations to all types of openings. I think it's just a matter of your style, the way that you like to play your games. And that's, that's the only way you can play your games, really. Or else you'd never make a move. Every time, every move that you make would be questioned. You know, oh, you could have done X, Y, and Z. You could have gone this way. There's a tactic that you could use using that. Um, I don't have the time to try and memorize all that type of stuff. I'm going on the feel of the game. What makes me feel safe-ish. And what potentially I can actually deliver from that position. A computer move, they can do it and they're looking like maybe 10 or 15 moves ahead. I mean, I'm just looking, lucky to go for four moves ahead. Yep, so happy that they're taking because obviously we've got this track here. So that's keeping that simple, straightforward. Just wanting to do something with this pawn, does he push or does he push down? Or does he want to beat us to the punch? He's not doing any of those, so I think in my heart of hearts they've lost the tempo. I'm going to push onto the pawn here. Because um, in my head I'm thinking, what is that move? The move is not stopping me from doing anything. As maybe they were thinking it's stopping the bishop from coming here. And again, now he's attacking a piece that is wanting to just capture this pawn here to get that out of the way. So it looks like he's going to be safeguarding this pawn now. Doesn't look like there's going to be any pushes down because it's got no support from this pawn here in any in any sense. I thought they were going to look to push here. So at this point, I'm going to take this pawn off the board. This pawn's now isolated in the centre of the board. So their concern is probably going to be well, we don't want it um, attacked. Probably bishop coming here to defend. So he's got like two pieces on there. Kind of slowly ish winning some movement time on the board, which is the tempo. But there's nothing clear yet. There's not yes, yeah, so the bishop's coming there, we said that. And going for a minuscule poor move here, and that just obviously that I'm going to be attacking the bishop if he if he leaves it there. Do have the knight coming here, but he's got the bishop and that as well, so his bishop could have actually taken this pawn with a check on our king. It still can. Because anything that goes to defend it is going to get taken. So I'm going to be probably a piece down but better for it in the position. So I'm fairly happy with that. Either one of the knights is going to take etc. But I'm feeling happy that our position is going to be slightly better. They're going to feel good because I'm not going to take back. Yeah, I'm not going to take back with the queen, am I? So the bishop takes, now he's on the king. So we can just move the king out of the way. So they could take the knight if they wanted to. But as I said at the beginning of this little exchange, positionally, we're going to feel a little bit better. So we'll wait to see, do they take the knight or are they going to try and be a bit fancy? Can't see any other fancy business. Well, they have gone fancy. So they've not actually taken the knight. Behind the knight is the pawn. Yep. So this is where the improvement in the position may start to take place. So just bring the rook here first. Trying to get that better position on the board. Yes, they're plus one. But is their position really any good? That's the question that I'm asking myself. So they eventually take, so we can take with the pawn or take with the rook. If we take with the rook, then the pawn comes into the center anyway. So we may as well just take with the pawn, just for now. Looking to improve our position on the board ever so slightly. 
Queen's now attacking the pawn, so it's attacking it twice. Okay, so it's now scrabbling around trying to grab up more pieces. Further, further away the queen goes, then obviously it's more an incentive for us to attack on their king side. So either one of the pawns can go, or we can bring our queen to defend. They're going to then look to drop this pawn because of this cover check with the um, bishop onto our queen. But positionally, like I've said right from the very beginning of this type of exchange, positionally, we probably are going to be advantageous. The computer's probably laughing at us going, no, you're not. But from what we can work out, we're going to be positionally slightly better for owning the file with the rook. Get a nice placement of the bishop. Maybe the bishop comes and just blocks this pawn here. So there's no harm or foul. Rook can now come and attack the pawn here because it's no protection on it at the moment. So does the rook go running tail? Oh no. That's an interesting position that their bishop got themselves in. So going to now start mobilizing the king across. As you can see positionally, the rook is looking to try and come down here, but our king can come here now. So this is what the type of thing I was talking about in terms of positionally, we're going to be slightly better. Because now we can come across here to basically attack this pawn. So we're attacking two pawns, the bishop's babysitting that. The rook can't come and defend this because the bishop is here protecting the square that it wants to go to. So the plus one aspect really doesn't hold true. So we can take the pawn and we can attack this pawn, but I don't want to waste time doing that. I'd rather block his king from actually coming down. Because if we would have gone for a two on one, his king would have just come to defend there. So now the king has released the pawn that it was protecting on the far side. And now they're looking to, um, we're plus one now, so we could exchange or we could put a check on the king. The bishop could take the pawn, but the rook would be taken. So in essence, if we put the check on the king, the king probably is going to drop down, realizing that the bishop is actually attacking, could attack the pawn. We could then go and attack their bishop, making them lose tempo, etc. So let's go with that first and see what happens. If it moves back, then we take the pawn here with the bishop. Ooh, juicy Lucy. Now, you could take, the king takes, but then we're down a piece. So we don't really want that. It's almost there. So we're going to attack the bishop anyway, trying to improve our position. He could now turn around and attack. He's not attacking our bishop at all. Got a nice fork there as well. We could push on to this pawn. Looking to see if we can entice a fork. It's a bit obvious, but his pieces, like we said, positionally, we're looking to be improved. So we could take the pawn and also be on his rook. So then his, if his king takes our rook, then we take his rook and we've reduced down his pawns even more. So I'm actually going to take. Got to watch the time as well. I've not even been watching the time. So they've actually moved the rook to come down and put a check on our king. That's an interesting situation. So we'll go and get bishop in the meantime with a check through. X-ray and through to the bishop. So we'll take the bishop in the meantime. And we'll come down and put a check on our king. Maybe getting this pawn off here. We're going to have to move a bit swifter now though. It's, oh! Damn, he saw that pawn and he was coming for it and the stealth bishop takes him off the board. 